Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're here. I want to take a quick second and thank all the channel members. Thank you guys more than you know. I appreciate you all. And thank anyone who comes through to check out my knife and EDC content. It means a lot to me and it makes it fun to do knowing that somebody watches it and gets some appreciation out of it. Or gets a chuckle out of it, right? Or can, you know, tell me what I said was wrong because I am not by any means right. Starting with this way that I've kind of been going through towards the end of the year, looking at my collection through some kind of different lenses to just kind of rediscover things I might not have been carrying as much. And so one way I classify is blade type. And you know me, I'm not good. I know the difference in a basic Warncliffe and a basic sheep for, sheep's foot, but there's so many modifications out there. So I came up with a category, uniquely my own, that is going to be kind of my worn cliffy sheep's feety type of blades that really are going to encompass anything from your more traditional sheep's foot blade to a very splinter pointer picker worn cliff to some weird modifications to some you know just different blade styles but to me I knew they weren't drop points. In my limited knowledge, I knew they weren't tontos. And I was able to come up with, we'll do our best to be 10, but I think which are going to be my 10 most notable sheep's foot slash worn cliffy knives that I have come to know and experience and own either before 2023, during 2023, or they still hold that place in my personal top 10, which is very subjective. So starting off, we are going to look at the Hinderer Eclipse 3 inch XM18 Warncliffe with a 20 CV blade. And guys, I'm trying to put these in some kind of order from 10 to 1, but really, every one of these knives, I cannot say that this 20 CV Hinder Eclipse 3 inch Warney is not as good of a knife or as enjoyable as a knife as other knives on this list. For other reasons, I just can't break my brain down like that. So when I show you number 10, don't think it's 10 spots behind number one. I'm just doing this numerically. And number 10 for my top 10 Warren Cliffy Sheep's Footy Blades that are in my collection as of December 2023, this little guy is definitely amongst the 10. Again, USA made the smaller XM18 3 inch with, as Christina at Women Carry Knives would say, a medium size knife. The finger choil fits me perfectly. It is the Battle Blue uh, lock side, and I was able to find a smooth Hinderer Battle Blue show side scale. Makes this knife a wonderful EDC package. Small, nimble. I double clutched it there, and it has that worn cliffy splinter diggy point that we won't see in a lot of our sheep's foot blades and others. But this is going to come in at number 10, and that is the 3 inch XM18 Warney. Coming in at number 9, a very unique knife. A, that it's an automatic. B, that it's an out the front, something I've never owned or had any interest in owning. And C, that it's a worn cliff um, or sheep's foot, whatever you want to call it. Has that flat blade, deep, deep hollow grind, compound tip here. Just an absolute beautiful knife. I'm a huge fan 
of John and Jamie over at EMP EDC, starting back with the OG Nimble. Um, I even tried one of the Slendermans, um, one of the early ODC, or out the front knives that John assembled and, uh, and did quality control on and sell, kind of to start Urban EDC, my understanding. I'm not that familiar with the Slenderman, but I am familiar with the Pulse. And this is an amazing, not only out the front, one of the major issues I had with out the fronts is I don't have a lot of thumb strength to retract the knife, but this guy is ergonomically pleasing, has fantastic action, has very little wobble for an out the front. Very, very nice lockup. I love it. I carry it quite a bit. It is, we weren't going to get into a paper cutting thing, but it is a slicey beast for anything that I use a knife for, which is, as you guys know, more urban, more city, more open in packages, cutting paper. Uh, cutting through tape, things like that, right? So coming in at number nine, the Urban EDC out the front pulse has really surprised me and made me a huge fan. Not that I'm going to go buy other out the fronts, but I love that knife. Coming to an older knife in my collection, actually probably a little bit over two years. This is the OG grant gripper the full-size gripper i picked out the black it is a big knife it probably should have made in all retrospect my full-size knife list mine just for shits and giggles locks up very tight this particular specimen does um, but it's a front flipper, whoops, which I hate. It is a traditional flipper, and it has this perfect pill-shaped hole to middle finger flip it. You've got the steep hollow grind blade. You've got what I consider this really aggressive Jason Grant style, kind of his signature. I love the pokiness of the knife. It is on the larger side of knives that I carry. However, it's very nimble. It's a thinner knife, very refined, and an absolute slicey beast. Has a tip that will remove splinters that could dig into just about anything you would need to dig in because I think the Warncliffe blade is just that pronounced. Comes down to a very, very sharp point. And just a big fan of this knife. Um, I cannot wait for the Gripper V2, which is going to be a little smaller in terms of length. But I just love the package. I love the best tech manufacturing. I love the understated non-branding on the entire knife where it's just sterile. But you've got the Grant G on the clip. Huge fan. Coming in, again, no particular order, but we will call this number eight, the Grant Gripper. Which brings us to, I think, number seven. Another older knife from my collection, but a newer variation of my first. This is the Protec Malibu. Probably the best button lock in the game has always been my favorite button lock. This is the second one I have owned. I had a straight Magnica or a straight 20 CV aluminum um, Malibu that I just absolutely loved. It had the smooth handle, smooth aluminum handles. I was at Nashville Custom Knife Show a couple years ago. Um, bumped into David Protech and picked up this little guy here, which was the textured version of the Malibu, the same knife I had before, same kind of worn cliffy, sheep's footy, reverse tanto -y blade. I look at it kind of as a sheep's foot worn cliff. Um, as my smooth, but just had an upgraded handle, 
love it. Moved on my other one to Brother Vince at Semper Fi, who then did a giveaway with it. And um, just really, again, a knife that when I look at Sheep's Footy Worn Cliffy Knives, even though this one's got some age behind it, it's a knife I still carry quite often and appreciate it for its elegance, its function, and the way it performs. Moving on, we come to a knife that I came for, came into right about two or three months before Blade Show this year. Um, came in with kind of a trade plus a little cash on my part to obtain this knife. It had orange scales. This is Brother OCD for EDC Justin's Spydeco. Um, I want to say it was a cutlery shop exclusive. I could be wrong on the uh, Warncliffe Spydeco Paramilitary 2 and CTS HXP. Even has the Spydeco membership number. I added the rock scale designs, reptile scales, because I really love these titanium scales. And it's made this knife an absolute beast. One of my, well, probably my favorite pair of two. I have a standard pair of two in S110V, and I have a Tonto in uh, just S30V. But in terms of the sliciness, this Warncliffe blade is, I mean, next level splinter picker, pokey stabby, um, detail cutting, label shredding, however you want to look at it. Just a fantastic pokey little Warncliffe blade. And I am really glad, as much as I'd kind of moved out of PM2s as kind of my go-to knives, that I picked this knife up. And I really do think that highly of it. I love this knife. And this is the pair two, courtesy of my brother, Justin, OCD for EDC, and a trade we made that I have this in my collection. Moving on, we come to another small worn cliff. I want to say we are down to number Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we are down to number five because we've done 10, nine, eight, seven, six. So number five is this little hinder, which is kind of a later addition to my collection. Came in towards probably third quarter of this year. This is the Hinderer Half Track, a little mini, mighty, thick, beastie compared to my Hinder 30 Warncliffe, which is going to be a little bit longer, you have the scale thickness and the blade's thickness of your XM18 on the little half track. So I love this knife because it was a unique Warncliffe. It was just stonewash finish, which is a finish that I did not have in my collection. And I was able to get online and find a titanium matching show side scale, which really stoked me out. Now guys, keep in mind, this knife, the way I drag it, is not gonna cut as smoothly as some of the others. For one, it has a thicker grind. For the other, I haven't laid it back, but it is very, very slicey. It just needs a little work on that angle. The tip on it, is next level. It is an absolute splinter digger. I don't know why that wasn't cutting better because this knife is slicey. Um, it, again, it's one that I have thought about and wrestled with. The reason I've held up a couple of knives to send to Satu Dave after I saw the hollow grind that he put on one, I really liked it. But I'm thinking about just taking my TS Prof and laying this guy just to a solid 17, 17 and a half. It is middle finger flickable. Um, it's not the easiest knife to middle finger flick because you don't have as much to grab there, but I've gotten to where I can get it pretty good just from getting used to it. But the good news is it flips great. You can push button it. You can light switch it. Stevie, it said Stevie, was kind enough to give me this Lynch Northwest clip 
for the Hinderers. He picked this up, hoping to use it for one of his McNeese. Um, for some reason, McNeese just decided to build him a standard one that would have no, um, no little, what would you call it? No little uh, ridge to set into the Hinderer scales like this one does. Stevie was going to have to grind it off. So they just went ahead and made a McNeese clip. I was the beneficiary of that, of uh, Stevie thinking about me. So that's a mod that this knife has. And just absolutely, as I fail it, really like this guy. It's a chonk. It's substantial. And it is a slurpy saver at every turn. So coming in at number five, we have the Hinderer half track, which brings us to number four. Number four is a knife that's been in the collection for a while, probably going on two years. It was the EDC Specialties Jaeger M. Um, I've recently done some upgrades on it. I did finally obtain the black hardware um, from Brian Brown. It was originally going to ship with that from Riot. I wasn't the original owner. I bought it from a guy who bought two. Uh, the only downside was they didn't have any black spacers, black backspacers left in stock. So at first I thought about keeping my stonewashed uh, clip, my stonewashed collar, and my stonewashed backspacer. But amongst going, after going to their site and looking a little closer, I noticed that they had the Zerk kits, which consisted of the pivot collars, the Zerk clip, and the Zerk backspacer. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it absolutely made the knife so much more fresh to me and made me want to carry it that much more. The Jaeger V2 is one of my favorite knives. I think it's an absolute beauty. It has fantastic action. Mine's the flipperless version, but this had been a grail on my list forever. Um, came across it the way I do a lot of knives right place at the right time happened to be out at a local knife shop here in athens and one of my buddies who i see out there quite a bit had just gotten his in and had gotten in too because he was torn on the colorway um, he had one flipper one non-flipper decided he wanted to keep the flipper and i immediately jumped on this and then made a couple of upgrades that again make it unique make it just more, I mean, it's a user for me. I don't hard use it, but I carry it. I love it. Number four, I guess you would call this Sheep's Footy Warren Cliffy, the Brian Brown Jaeger V2. The V3 is dropping tomorrow when I, re when I review this. It will have dropped yesterday when this uh, goes live. I doubt... I'm in a position to get on one now as much as I'd like to, but I will definitely be keeping my eye out. But guys, fantastic knife at number four. We're going to call that the Jaeger V2, and we're going to move on to number three. Guys, this is a knife that I cannot speak highly enough about. This is a custom maker where knives um, and this is the model, the Alley. Ware makes custom knives in the USA, all different sizes, shapes, variations. The Alley has probably been his eyes roll of oh, Roosevelt, right? It's the knife that most people open the books, get on his list, and they want an Alley. Um, so he did what I thought was really cool, was he did a run of alley peas. Basically, the alley specked out to the way he specs it, and then he had it OEM'd, either by Riot or Best Tech. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is definitely on his website. So the alley P is, again, to quote Christine, a very medium, small to medium sized knife, has a wonderful little splinter digger, has a super, super keen hollow ground edge. Very slicey tip. Wonderful action. I chose the solid tie 
This knife's also available. And I think they're still around, like at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and a couple of other retailers have a few. But you can also get it, like my buddy A to Z did, with a micarta inlay. He got in a little bit earlier than I did, so he was still able to get a satin blade. That's something that I really wanted. So when I got around to grabbing one, I was towards the end of the day, and they only had the satin in the full tie, which was fine with me. Nothing against stone wash. I just wanted this knife because, again, I've been following Ware's custom knives, and this knife just struck a chord with me in this exact configuration. It's number three, guys. I love it. Which brings me to number two. One that took me by surprise. Nah, it shouldn't have, but it did because I resisted it for so long. Guys, this is the Devo Buzz. I never bought a Devo Stout V1. I am probably not going to buy a Stout V2. It has nothing to do with the quality that I know that it brings to the table to all the positive reviews I've heard about it. It's just, for some weird reason, doesn't speak to me the way knives that I love do. The buzz did speak to me. When I first started seeing it, I loved the neutral look of the buzz. I loved the ergonomics, the way that Colin and Lefty just masterfully designed their front finger choils. I loved the deep hollow grind, I found it just an amazing knife, right? You can do this reach around, which is not my jam at all, but just the fact that it's an option, I thought was pretty cool. Um, so I'd had a mash V2. I've got three nips, all of which I bought. I've had two... Um, Growlers, Growler V1 that I gave away at a Friday Night Flicks, and a Growler V2 um, that I kept. I've had a Pony Stout that I gave away on Friday Night Flicks, and then I picked up my last Devo, is this Buzz. And I don't have the Stout to compare it to. I've handled it at shows and whatnot, but this is a Best Tech Made high quality, fantastic slicing tool. I love the action. I love the black and satin, which was the colorway that I went after. It's got a fantastic liner lock, has great weight relief, reversible clip that will accept a Lynch clip if that's your jam. I personally like a wire clip. And guys, I love this knife. Um, this is the Devo Buzz, there are still a couple available, I think, um, Blade HQ maybe, Blade H Screw, if you check around. But the Devo Buzz is my number two Warren Cliffy Sheaf foot blade of the year, which brings us to number one. And there can only be one, right? I guess if I had to say what was my biggest surprise, only because I loved the knife, initially did not get in on the drop, the drop came, came through White Mountain Knives. I let it go. I did not get one. Uh, my buddy, however, A to Z EDC did get one. So um, I had the misfortune or the fortune of being able to bring it in on the channel and review it and realized right away that I had absolutely missed the ball on one of the greatest knives I thought of 2023. Had never had a null knives before. This is the Voodoo. This is... An amazing tool, an amazing knife, amazing worn cliff, an amazing cutter, an ergonomical masterpiece, has one of the best integrated poons in jimping to get a grip on a knife that I've handled this year. And I was able to pick this up from one of the brothers in the community who will remain nameless but he posts the coolest hand pocket dumps on IG. You can find out who that is just by looking at who's the coolest pocket dumper on IG. But anyways, this is the Null Knives Voodoo. Guys, the action, the options, even though it's a flipper only, you can get behind the fuller. You can flip the triangular 
thumb studs. You can thumb flick it with no trouble. It's got this wonderful concealed bolster lock, pocket clip that goes in and out of the pocket like butter. You've got, when the blades open, you see no blade steel when it's closed. I love the font. You see the M390. When it's open, all you see is the Null Voodoo logo. Guys, just an absolute winner. I love this knife. This is the Null Knives Voodoo. It is by far, well, not by far, but it is my number one Orange Clippy Sheep's Footy knife of 2023. I'll try to lay some of these out as we part ways here. They won't be in order. I won't be able to fit them all in there. You know how I roll, guys. I'm a slacker. I apologize, but I do appreciate each and every one of you coming by to check out the channel, check out my knives, follow me down these crazy rabbit holes that I get myself in, and um, always, always, always go forward with love in your heart. Please, please, please choose debate over hate, and look out for the guy or gal to your left, look out for the guy or gal to your right, look out for one another, be kind to each other, that's an easy one to do, guys. It takes less energy, and I'm not trying to lecture. I'm not trying to virtue signal. All I want y'all to do is have good days. Treat people with love, guys. It'll come back to you. I love each and every one of you. Peace.